I've had a very diverse training in head and neck surgery. Normally think about head and neck surgeons doing cancer removal and maybe some reconstruction, but my practice sort of extends beyond that. So the classic uh, tumor resections that you typically are trained in residency is within my realm, as well as reconstructive surgery all over the body, uh, as far as areas that we borrow tissue from. But I also have a skill set of training in transoral surgery. So I did a fellowship uh, back in the 2000s in transoral laser microsurgery, which is a way to approach tumors from the inside. And the option of doing that allows us to sort of maintain the structural framework for speech and for swallowing so there's fast recovery. And so I've translated that into not only transoral laser surgery, but transoral robotic surgery. So for people with tumors in the back of the tongue, in the tonsil, or down in the voice box, I can sometimes offer them a conservative surgery that maintains form and function, but also addresses the cancer. And that's sort of my, my main cancer practices, but then I also have these side practices of salivary gland diseases. I am sort of the go-to person in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia for salivary endoscopy as a means of treating salivary gland dysfunction. So I've sort of built some of these niche practices over time just through my training and through my experience. My approach to patient care, since I have been here at UNC and probably since I was in training, my goal has been to truly get to the, the personalized medicine. We talk about it now, it seems like a catchphrase now, but for me, it's not a catchphrase. And if you look back at sort of what I've done over the years, our first trial in 2011, uh, was on, can we find a way to risk adapt therapy? Can we take the best aspects of medical oncology, the best aspects of surgical oncology and radiation and find a way to tailor our therapy so that patients are upscaled in what they need or downscaled in what they need? So that first trial was looking at, can we find ways to use my transoral surgery techniques, again, sparing form and function, mix that with medical oncology at a lower toxicity using immunotherapy and find a way to get some patients maybe less therapy and give them a cure and identify those that need more therapy so that we can truly risk adapt. And so that's been the focus of my oncology career is risk adapted therapy. And now that the science of medicine is, is advancing with that mission, now we're seeing this blossom not only here, but in other places. I can remember back when I was just a little kid being fascinated when I'd have to go to the ER for stitches and and the, and what they were able to do. My mom was a nurse. Uh, she wasn't a practicing nurse when I was growing up, but I would hear about her experiences in, as a nurse. And I was always so fascinated at her stories and at the ability to heal. Uh, I've taken multiple personality tests over my career, uh, and I find that what always comes to the top is kindness, compassion, and empathy. And so it seems like a natural fit. I, I love taking care of patients. I tell my trainees who work with me, whether it's residents or medical students, that frankly, I think I'd be happy doing anything in medicine. I loved every rotation in medical school. I could have been a psychiatrist, a medicine doctor. I just love the idea of being able to take care of patients. I think I found my best fit, but just the, I get such satisfaction no matter how long the day is that I did something impactful for somebody else. And so since I was a little kid, that's always been such a cool sort of mission to have and as, as I've gotten older obviously what I thought was basically a childlike fantasy has now become more of a reality that I can truly appreciate. I mean, I'm a Jersey boy. Uh, what do I what do I belong down here in North Carolina? So uh, my path here uh, I believe in a lot of sort of serendipity and chance encounters and so I went to school at Davidson. So I'm a Davidson grad uh, in the late 90s and so that was my tie to the con at first. I mean, just going to Davidson from Jersey was already a step. It was sort of a school I added on last minute because my headmaster said, you know, you're going to Duke in, in North Carolina, you should check out Davidson. It's a school that you probably want, but in the South. And I always wanted to move away from home. My dad wanted me to stay in Jersey and go to Princeton. And it was the first school I went to where my dad said, if you want to go here instead, I'm okay. I think it's because he found out that that year, Davidson was literally the hardest working school in the country. So he knew I wouldn't be able to goof off. And so I went to Davidson, had a wonderful experience, wound my way to Pittsburgh for a medical school. And part of that was my, my dad had passed away from cancer when I was a senior in, in college. And so I took some time off to kind of figure out my direction. I mean, I was always this kid that was going from the next thing to the next thing. And my dad passed away. And so I took a year off and worked at a lab in New York. And I had an, a happenstance encounter with a medical student from Pittsburgh who was doing a rotation in our lab. She's like, you should really apply to Pittsburgh. And I, I did, and I loved it. I was there for about nine years. And my last two years there, I ran into a formal faculty member from here who was doing his training out there. And 
he came back and told our current boss, he said, you know, you should really look at this guy from Pittsburgh. He's doing this transural surgery fellowship. He'd be a great addition to our department. And so here it was, I was finishing my senior year. Uh, I know I'm going to St. Louis for fellowship. And I got brought here for an informal interview that lasted two days, after which I got offered a job. And I can tell you that before I even got back to the beach where my family was staying during this interview, there was already a UNC sticker on the car. Like my wife was set like, yes, I'm fine with moving back here. I want to move out of the Midwest again. And so all these sort of chance encounters that kind of led us back to here. I think my family would tell them that I have a never ending amount of zest. My wife sometimes in the morning says I need to turn it down because I just, I. I get energized by every situation I'm in. I'm an outdoors person. I love to be outside running around. And yeah, I, I have this, uh, this zest in me where just life is always so much fun. There's always so much that you can do. And I find probably joy and excitement uh, in everything I do, whether it be there's leadership conferences I do, whether it be going to my kids' sporting events. I just revel in the fact that I get to be a part of those things. And so, I think my patients see that when they come at the end of the clinic, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, and somehow I'm still like just ready to roll. Um, and then the other part of it too is I think my patients realize that I love stories. I'm a big storyteller, and I know all my patients when they come back just by name and stories. And so uh, the sense of zest, enthusiasm, and, I, and that I love to tell stories, and I love to hear their stories. And so I'm a big story hound, whether it be reading or people. I think the balance of life and work and the balance of medicine um, is a challenge for all of us, myself included. Uh, and I think patients should know that we here at UNC are doing our best to give the best possible care to everyone that we see. And that we are continuing to do that despite the significant demands that get put on us. There's less time, there's more that needs to be seen, there's less space. And, and I would just say that for me and for my partners and for everyone, I think grace and understanding goes a long way across the community that we will be here for you as best as we can um, and that my energy is poured into this um, but like everybody else i need to refill every once in a while and so i think it's important that everyone knows that we we do need time to refill and that, and that this is an intense job that we do and i keep coming back because i refill fast uh, and i love what i do